In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a simple menu screen in Scratch. It's one sprite, and you can easily backpack it and apply it to your games. To start off, we need to create three costumes. The Start button, the game title, and the background. Now in the code editor, we need to hide the sprite because we are making clones. We'll create a custom block to do that job. Make sure to run it without screen refresh. Then, under the custom block, we will need to position all three costumes and clone them. Let's start with the start button. Create a new variable called clone ID. Make sure it's for this sprite only, otherwise it won't work. Now set clone ID to the name of the costume that's being cloned. In this case, it's start button. Set the costume to start button. And finally, create the clone. Make sure clone ID and the costume name are exactly the same, no spelling errors. Otherwise you will have problems later on. Right click and duplicate those blocks three times to make it easier. One for each costume. And also change the costume and clone ID. Lastly, we need to show the clones. Run the project. This looks like a mess. But we'll fix that next. First of all, send the background to the back layer. Then we need to properly position the start button and game title. These positions work for me. If they don't look good on your project, you'll have to do some tweaking. Now this looks like a menu screen, but it doesn't work like one. Let's code that part. We need to identify the start button by its clone ID. Then, check whether it's being clicked or not. Make sure to spell start button right. When the mouse is touching the start button and the mouse is being held down at the same time, that's when a click happens. When the start button is clicked, we want to broadcast a message. I'll name it start, because it signifies the start of the game. When the message is received, we need to delete all the clones and reveal the game. We don't have a game right now, so it will be a blank screen. The menu screen is functional, but it looks pretty boring. Let's add some effects. We'll make it so that when you hover over the start button, it lightens up and gets bigger. We'll make this only apply to start button clothes. If touching the mouse pointer, change the brightness by 2 and the size by 5. The repeat block makes it a smooth transition. Now, we wait until the mouse pointer is not touching the start button, and then undo the size and brightness effects. Change 2 to negative 2 and 5 to negative 5. Now the start button has a nice effect. Next, we'll add a floating effect to make the menu screen even more interesting. First, let's make the game title float up and down. We identify the game title clone. 
Make sure to spell game title correctly. Drag a go2xy block into the if statement, and then create a new variable. I'll name it sign, because that's the function we're using. Put the sign variable into the sign operator block. Now multiply the output by 10. Finally, add an addition block. Fill in whatever value you want the game title's Y position to be. In my case, it's 80. Now put everything in the Y position slot. Change sign by 5. The game title is floating up and down now. Let's add a rotating effect to the start button next. Duplicate the script we just made, and get rid of the sign variable. Change it from game title to start button. Drag out a point in direction block. Then, rearrange the blocks and change the values as I do here. Multiply it all by 5. And finally, add 90 so the start button is right side up. Now, put it all in the rotation block. And then drag it into the forever loop. And now, we have a fully functional menu screen that is cool effects. Although we're finished coding the menu screen, we still need to apply it to our games. I'll show you exactly how to do it. Open your backpack on the bottom of your screen, and then drag the menu screen sprite into it. Now go into the game you want to add the menu screen to. And then drag the sprite you just backpacked out into the project. Right now, we can play the game before the start button is pressed. So, let's fix that. You remember when we created that start message? Well we'll make use of that now. Basically, replace all green flag blocks with the one I receive start block. Don't replace any green flag blocks in the menu screen sprite though, because that's what triggers the whole project when the flag is pressed. While you are making your games, a good habit is to not use the green flag block for every script, and instead use a message. Then you can trigger the message with a single green flag block, and the whole game will start. Later on, when you add the menu screen, you can get rid of this script. Now, put a when green flag clicked hide in every sprite other than the menu screen. This is because we don't want the game showing before the start button is pressed. Now, we show the sprites after the start message is triggered. If you have any variables, hide them under a green flag click block, and then show them under a when I receive start block. And finally, the whole thing is done. If you have any questions or problems, post them in the comments, and I'll try my best to help. See you in the next video.